splayed and quilled. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Before to start today's tutorial, let's have a quick update from last week's video. Thanks to your comments on the channel and uh, on Krita's forum, I was made aware of a few things I had forgotten to mention and some matters that I didn't know were happening. So let's get to it uh, very quickly. When you create a text box, a new layer appears in the layers docker. If you look closely, you will notice that the layer is called a vector layer, not paint layer. This is because in Krita, texts are created as vector graphics, not pixel graphics. I forgot to mention that uh, just like in a Word document, you can type your own format size. Uh, you are not only limited to the choices offered in the drop-down menu. To do so, highlight the existing number and type a new one. I am going to type 68. And voila! I was informed that you can add any fonts of your choice to the PC's system fonts. That's great news. This means that you are not only limited to the drop-down menus list. However, guys, I am not a computer expert and I am very sorry to say that I have no idea how to do that. I was told of another matter. The kerning toggle seems to not work and a bug report is obviously needed. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here you can activate the functionality and then change the space between your letters using the window right next to it. However, look what happens when I turn it off. Since it's uh, turned off, it should not work, right? However, as you can see, it still is working. So I will send a note to the forum and uh, hopefully this bug uh, will be fixed in the near future. When you are using the paint layer, you are creating images that are based on pixels. As you can see here, as I zoom in, squares start to appear. These are pixels. To create good quality paintings, you need to decide first how many pixels per inch you want. This will be your image resolution. The more pixels per inch you have, which means the higher the resolution, the better your image quality will be. You will set the resolution of your image at the very beginning when you create your canvas. To do so, enter a value right here, below the width and height boxes. Please know that the optimum print resolution in the digital printing industry is 300 ppi, meaning 300 pixels per inch. You might be tempted to create canvases with higher resolutions, but I wouldn't recommend it. As far as I know, using higher numbers will not create drastic differences in the print quality of your job. Also be careful because your files will be so large that they will take up a lot of space on your computer. So as a general rule of thumb, 300 is a good number to stick to. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Use this color mode only if you are working with clients or, or in any other professional manners. The reason why this color mode is preferred by professionals is because it is based on the percentage of ink that will be assigned to each pixel. So for example, the software may assign a small percentage of ink to light colors and maybe a higher percentage of ink to darker colors. 
Therefore, because these images are created to be printed more optimally, you will notice that their colors are kind of weak. Uh, they lack richness of tones and depths of color. RGB stands for red, green and blue. It is the standard color mode used by your computer monitors and by digital cameras. Digital artists like me prefer RGB over CMYK for a very specific reason. For instance, I love the liveliness and the great variations of colors that RGB can give me. If you didn't know, systems like Krita can combine all three colors and create millions of other colors. Use the CMYK color mode if you intend your work to be printed with ink. Use the RGB color mode if you intend to only display your work digitally. Alright, so this is where you're going to laugh because I cannot say the word and it's going to sound like I'm talking about somebody who died. But I'm going to try to pronounce the word death. <laughs> So what we are going to talk about here is a bit depth. <laughs> the greater the bit value, the greater the number of color tones. One bit equals to two tones, one for white and one for black. So for instance, if you were an artist who only creates black and white images, you would set the value to one. But as you can see here, we do not have that option. We are only given three options, 8, 16, and 32. So which one to use? If you are creating only grayscale images, I would set my value to 8. Now do the math, that will give you 256 tones. Now, if you are like me and you are creating uh, color images, uh, you would want to set uh, the amount uh, at 16 or maybe 32. Now, 16 uh, will give you 65,000 color tones. That's a lot. When 32 will give you up to, oh my gosh, this is an enormous amount of tones. Okay, let's see, that's 4 billion, 294 million, 967,296 tones. Okay, who needs that? Not me. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I set my value. I set mine to 8 and I do that for two good reasons. Uh, first, I am a cartoonist. I don't need 65,000 color tones. <laughs> my creations are way too simple for that. And second, the higher value you uh, set your uh, bit depth, the more space on your computer you will take. So that's why I stick to 8. So now that you have set your canvas properly, you can start creating your arts. But before you start, here again, you have to ask yourself some questions. For instance, so what type of work are you about to do? Are you working for a client? Is he going to print your work? Or are you just going to create something that is going to be displayed uh, digitally? So this is when you have to decide if you want to create a raster image or a vector image. So if you are going to create a raster image, you are going to use a paint layer. If you are going to create a vector image, you are going to use a vector layer. To start off on the right foot, it is important that you understand the difference between a raster image and a vector image. Let's look closely at this image and analyze it. If I increase its size using the transform tool, so let me get the transform tool and increase the size. Okay, look at what is happening. 
the image is starting to lose its quality, it's becoming somehow blurry and uh, pixelated. The same, by the way, would happen if I was using the zoom, you know, if I was zooming in. So this is happening for a simple reason. When you increase the size of your image, or if you zoom in, you are stretching the pixels that you have and you're asking them to fill a larger area. Now keep in mind that you didn't increase the number of pixels by increasing the size of your image, right? You just increased the area that you want them to fill. The number of pixels is the same. Remember, we set our resolution to 300 pixels per inches. The image is getting distorted because the pixels are stretching to make you happy and fill the new big area. Let's create a vector layer first. Now vector images are a different story. Uh, vector images are not made of pixels. Uh, they are made uh, from uh, mathematical uh, calculations based on straight or curved lines. All right, so let me try to explain and uh, this is something complicated and please know that uh, uh, this is what I understand, okay? If I am wrong, please, 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 please uh, feel free to correct me in the comment area. So let me draw some curves uh, here and uh, some uh, straight lines first, and I'm going to also add some points. Okay, so this is what I believe is happening. I think that the software in Krita is calculating path between the two points at each end of every new line I created here, as well as it calculates their position related to each other. So if you really think about it, it's less work for the software, right? Because rather than manipulating uh, thousands or millions of pixels, the software is only dealing with points that are connecting uh, lines or curves. I have here a raster image uh, of the cat and on the other side I have created a vector image of the same uh, cat. When you zoom in, you will notice very quickly what uh, differentiates them. The raster image is becoming blurry as the vector image remains uh, undisturbed. Pros and cons. I am sure that there are plenty of pros and cons, uh, so let me mention only a few of them. If you want to create something uh, with details and uh, great granularity, I would uh, use a raster image. Unfortunately, uh, raster images, you cannot resize them uh, without distorting them. The more resolution, the bigger the size of your file too, so that's uh, definitely a con. Images can be resized uh, without distortion. They can be enlarged to fit uh, on a billboard without any problems. Since the vector images only contain the mathematical instructions, the size of your files will always be smaller than the size of the rasterizer image. Now the cons is that uh, they don't have much granularity as raster images do. As I mentioned earlier, they don't have this richness of the tone and colors. All right, we are done for today. Next week, uh, we are going to create uh, from scratch uh, a vector image using uh, different tools. So I'll see you next Monday and until then, uh, keep practicing and uh, create some great art. <laughs> Bye!